I just discovered what is wrong with Windows 11 Auto HDR. And this is something that I thought about when using this new Lilium's inverse tone mapping shader where you have the option to select the gamma of the source. Okay, you have sRGB 2.2 or 2.4. For games that are supposed to be gamma 2.2, if you select sRGB, I was like, man, this looks like Windows 11 Auto HDR. And what's the difference? Near black, it looks brighter than it should. Okay, so that's why I recommend it for Windows 11 Auto HDR to use the fine tune dark areas option that we have on this LG OLEDs to reduce that gamma near black because this fine tune dark areas option affects from 0 to 30% of the signal level. Okay, so it doesn't affect the entire grayscale. And it works very well for Windows 11 Auto HDR. But on the other hand, some games, okay, rare exceptions with Windows 11 Auto HDR, look, they look great. They look absolutely perfect, no problem at all. And you don't have to lower this fine tune dark areas option. I understand now why. And I got confirmation. So basically what I was doing is I was downloading this uh, Pumbo Auto HDR, which was recommended by a lot of you. Uh, actually, hey, have you tried this? It might work even better for this HDR10 mod. So I, I was downloading it and testing it. And then I am reading how this works, okay? And here, here's the thing. This is what I read. Uh, differently from most other Auto HDR implementations, example, Windows 11 or, or a Special K, which I'm also going to explore a Special K. This shader aims to be more of an additive enhancement that doesn't drastically change the image, but just makes it shine. Additionally, you can also specify the gamma of the source SDR image. Windows Auto HDR assumes SDR signals follow the sRGB gamma, but that's barely ever true for games, okay? And that's what I see right now using this major pain, the Cactus HDR10 mod. When using the Lilium's inverse tone mapping, let me show you. Most of the games are Gamma 2.2, okay? So if you select sRGB, it looks too bright near black. That's the problem. I'm, I'm going to show you here. So every time you... You alt tap again, you need to enable here again this uh, auto HDR. Let me make this bigger here so you can see it. Let me show you what I mean. So when we have this uh, Lilium's inverse tone mapping shader activated, you see here detected back buffer color space gamma 2.2, okay? Plus BT709 primaries, okay? That's S SDR. So the problem is that Windows 11 does this. It does sRGB for everything, okay? It, it sRGB everything, and sRGB looks brighter near black. That's the problem, okay? So, man, they need to fix that. They definitely need to fix that because it just looks bad, okay? And it's going to look bad for most of the games, and that's just... It's just a shame, okay? Something as simple as that and as important as that. And also, it doesn't make any sense that Windows 11 is getting that wrong. When you get a new game, it doesn't support the Windows 11 Auto HDR immediately. You Usually, you have to wait two, three days, even, even a week or even uh, more than that. So, it is to be expected that there is some kind of know a specific support for each game and if there is something that they have to work on for that period of time is definitely you know detecting what is the game gamma okay the source gamma otherwise what are they doing i mean if if the auto hdr from windows 11 was working like day one like you just open the game auto hdr is always working and it's just the same thing again and again yeah, maybe it might be understandable, but if they are doing any kind of work to get support for the game, what are they doing? 
<laughs> I just don't understand because here with this um, Lilium's inverse tone mapping, you see like there is an auto detection going on, you know, detected back buffer color space, okay? And this is detecting, okay? The, the game is Gamma 2.2. <laughs> Windows Auto HDR needs to do the same thing, man. I just, it just blows my mind that they 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 don't have that uh, yet. So yeah, so let me give you a recommendation. Now that we are here, I was testing this uh, method C BT twenty four forty six method C, which I already tested, and you can make it work with dynamic tone mapping. And this is what the difference is gonna be. You're going to get less average brightness, but you're going to get more pop on the highlights because of ABL. On this LG OLEDs, we have ABL. So when you have an average brightness that's too high, the highlights are not going to pop. So if you can reduce that average brightness a little bit, you're gonna get a little bit more pop for the HDR. So this is something you can try. Try the BT2446 method C. If you don't know what we're talking about here, link in the description of the video so you can get this working. It's a mod, it's a reshape mod called Major Pain the Cactus that allows you to force the HDR10 uh, from, the, from the engine. Okay? So now with that HDR10, we use this Lilium's inverse tone mapping to get it looking right, okay? to get it looking good. And I'm testing this new, I'm going to test this new Pumbo um, uh, shader. So that's coming next. But for now, this, this is looking absolutely amazing. And we have this inverse tone mapping method option. So the one that I've been recommending is BT2446 method A with HGIG and Gamma 2.2 for games that are 2.2 and sRGB for games that are sRGB. Okay. And the only thing you have to do is just select the target brightness depending on your display. So now I'm going to give you another option if you have an LG OLED. This is something that might look uh, very, very good too. Which is basically use this method C. Okay, what's going to happen is the average brightness is going to go down. But you're going to use dynamic tone mapping to push that average brightness. So when you have daytime, it is going to look good it's gonna for example this game which has a snow a bright a snow day uh a sunny you know bright sunny day it is bright enough it looks very good i also tested this on a game called a steep uh from ubisoft that is just a snow you're snowboarding and stuff and it looks bright enough with this met method and dynamic tone mapping and then what you have to do here is come down to where it says um input brightness you know, be, below BT2446 method C, and then you're gonna select, you're going to type in 118.04, no, 118.4. You move it here to 118.4, it's, you know, when you put the map with the mouse on top of it, it says 118.4 is 1000 nits. And if we double check here with this. HDR analysis tool from Lilium, we see here Max CLL 998, okay? So now the problem is it's not bright enough, so we're going to use dynamic tone mapping. So we're going to use dynamic tone mapping, master and pick Max CLL 1000, okay? And that's going to fix that average brightness issue, and you're going to get a little bit more pop maybe on the highlights when the average brightness of the scene is too high, if you're using HGIG just because of ABL limitations of this uh, OLED. So that's another option you can try. Dynamic tone mapping here. And then you come here, 1113111. And select Master and Pick Max CLL 1000. Give this a try. It might look uh, good. It doesn't look brighter than the HGIG option. So if you select HGIG and then you come here and you select... BT2446 method A is a lot brighter, okay? It's a, it's a big, big difference. But this is just another option. Give it a try. I think it looks very good too. So now, before I end the video, just to recap the Windows 11 Auto HDR, let me uh, do that. So basically, if you have 
any display on Windows 11, any HDR display on Windows 11, download this HDR calibration app. This is what I am basically criticizing that they need to improve this. But for some games, this looks very, very good. And for games where it looks a little bit, you know, too bright near black, you can always, you know, maybe reduce the in-game slider, the gamma slider in the game if, if you have one. Or if you have an LG OLED, just use the fine-tuned dark areas uh, setting. So for this HDR calibration app, just click, you know, get started. You reduce this uh, first uh, screen minimal luminance to zero, okay? Then you go to the next one. And you're going to increase this until the logo disappears. So now, some monitors are receiving metadata from uh, Windows, okay? And a member of our community sent me the proof that that's happening with an LG Ultra Gear OLED. This OLED, that's 1440p, 240Hz, LG Ultra Gear. It is receiving metadata from Windows. So if you're, if you, use this method maybe this logo is never going to clip because if the display selects a tone mapping curve that's 10,000 nits because of this test pattern the, the logo will never disappear okay so you cannot use this method you need to know what is the brightness the actual brightness of the display and in that case for that LG Ultra Gear is 650 nits so if your display is, do, is doing something similar, which I doubt, most displays don't do tone mapping up to 10,000 nits. And so yeah, for most displays, just increase this brightness until the logo disappears, okay? And if your display has an HGIG option, that's what you wanna do to, that's what you want to use to do this test. Because if you use tone mapping off or dynamic tone mapping on this LG OLEDs, the default target is going to be 4,000. So if you select that, for example, if I select here, uh, like I have right now, dynamic tone mapping or even tone mapping off, it works for both. And then I come here and I select uh, mastering pick max seal, you know, let's say uh, 3000, for example, 3000. I am going to get clipping when the max CLL is 3000, okay? I would need to reduce the, let me reduce the, the exposure here so you can see this. I have to reduce this to the minimum and probably increase the shutter speed a lot. Just so I can show you this. Okay, now you will for sure you will see this. You're not going to see my face, but you see the logo. So right